All right. So in the last class, we started discussing um, the addressing mode, and at this point, based on uh, your homework practice, I saw that most of you practiced and uh, you at least have the understanding of the addressing mode. So you probably don't understand the instruction yet, but just by looking at the instruction, we can uh, identify the addressing mode at this point. That is my assumption. Now, what is the next step? So we'll make the next step tonight. The next step is, as you remember, that this is the first slide we started um, with the instruction. Any instruction here for this, um, for the language you are going to learn, the assembly, you will see two different things. One is the opcode, and another one is the operand, just like this one. So all the instructions will look like same, but they will have different opcode, different operands, right? And we also know that, okay, this is, there is an addressing mode. Every instruction has different addressing modes. They have immediate, direct, extended, um, indexed, some other modes as well. We don't know yet how uh, we, have, we, we can figure those out. But um, at this point, we know this, that any instruction when we run, basically when we assemble using the compiler we have, the assembler, it basically translates the instruction to machine code. Machine code is nothing which is directly understandable by the microprocessor. All those codes are written in binary. Because you know, in computer, everything is binary. But for our own uh, flexibility, we will write those machine code in hex instead of writing in binary. Because binary numbers are long, hex numbers are short. That's not probably the best uh, uh, clarification I can give that why we use binary, I'm sorry, hex instead of binary. <coughs> Excuse me, but remember that in, but inside the machine, everything is binary. Now for an example here, so you see the instruction is LDAA pound sign dollar zero two. We don't understand exactly what's going on with this instruction, but we know that this is, what is the mode? immediate, right? So we know that, okay, this is immediate, and based on that, we'll be able to identify, we'll be able to find out their object code. Object code is the machine code, because, you know, that's the, by object code we mean that's the object code is basically the machine code, that's the code machine understands directly, okay? The microprocessor understands directly, okay? So tonight, we will learn how to write the object code from a given line of instruction, okay? So we'll first look at the instruction. For an example here, here is an instruction. Now to find out the object code of an instruction, we first want to know what is the addressing mode. Now we know what is the addressing mode. So I think we all can identify the addressing mode here. What is the addressing mode of this instruction? Check your set of instruction. Remember, we always need the set of instruction. What is the addressing mode? Direct? Anybody has anything else? Are we in agreement that this is direct, right? So the addressing mode is direct for now. Now, once we know the addressing mode, what is next? How to find the object code? Now, to find the object code, <coughs> as, you, as you saw in the last slide, we will get a number, basically a code, for opcode, right? And we'll get another number for the operand. So there will be two separate things. One will be coming from the operand. Another, another part will be coming from the operand. Opcode, operand, right? So how do I know what will be the opcode? What will be the object code for the opcode? So to know that, we will go back to the set of instructions. Let's go back to the set of instructions, and then I'll start, we, we'll, we'll see how we. So we now have the set of instructions here, and as we all know that the instructions are alphabetically sorted. So let's look at the sub uh, B, the one that we just have here in the slide. So let's look at the sub B. Now if you look at the sub B, 
So this is the instruction in the in, in here. Now what was the mode for this instruction? Direct, right? So as you see here, all the modes are listed. So these are all the modes available for this instruction. And for every single mode, we have a different opcode here. For an example, if mode is immediate, the opcode is C0. Do you see it? If the mode is direct, the opcode is D0. If it is extended, the opcode is F0. So they are different because of their addressing mode. Now at this point, the addressing mode is direct. So the opcode is going to be D0, right? Now we know the we know the object code for the opcode, which is D0. Now let's get back to the slide again and see uh, what is next. Now to get the object code, this is the object code we will have. So now we have a, we have the answer why we get D0 here, right? But how do I get 23 there? Any clue? Remember, as I said, the first part will be coming from the opcode which is D0, we now understand it. Now the second part, which is 23, is coming from the operand, which is 35 here. Now if you look at 35, can you identify what is the number system of 35? Is this decimal or hex? Remember, the hex should be preceded by a dollar sign. So there is no dollar sign, so this is decimal. Remember, when we are writing the object code, we will always write it in hex. So 23 is nothing but the hex of 35. So anything has to be written in hex when you are writing the object code. So the 23 is hex of 35. I, I, I think we all know how to convert from decimal to hex, but just in case, because you know, I, we know that this is a little bit advanced class, so what we can do is, we can always go back to the calculator if you have access uh, here, when you open the calculator, what you can do is just change the mode to programmer mode. And then you see here, once you have the programmer mode, you will see all the number system here. Then let's say you want to know what is the hex of decimal 35. Now the mode is decimal, so just let's write 35 here and change the mode to hex. Once you click it, you will know the answer right away. I, and at the same time, remember, we are not trying to tell, not trying to say that we don't want to know the method. I'm assuming that we all know how to convert from decimal to hex. We know it, right? How to convert from decimal to hex. But in case you just want to use the calculator, you can always do that. So, so the object code here is D023. And one more thing. Remember, uh, <coughs> during the last discussion, we also mentioned that Anytime you see two digit of hex, that means how many byte? Two digits of hex is eight bit, one byte. Basically, in two digit of hex, at max you can write FF, which is 255. Again, one byte, right? So how many bytes you see here in the object code? Two bytes, right? Because D0 is one byte and 23 is another byte, right? So it's two byte. Now remember, all the, all the instructions you are writing and all the instructions when they are being translated, that takes memory location, right? Because you have to store it somewhere, right? I'm saying at this point, remember, the memory locations means the RAM. Whenever, even when you are doing operation in register, still you have to deal with their locations. They have to, you have to keep it in some memory location. So at this point, here we have two bytes. Most of the instructions you will have here will be varying from one byte to three bytes. So some of the instructions will be one byte. I'm saying the object code will be one byte. Some of the instructions for this one, for an example, it's two bytes. Some of the instructions you will have three bytes. Now, when you are entering your answer in pause, we basically put a space between the bytes, just to, you know, just to make sure that there are different bytes. So D0 is the first byte, 23 is the next byte. That's why you put a blank space there. So you can, you can do the same thing when you are entering your answer in, in pause. But let's try another example here. What is the object code? ABA. Let's go back to the set of instruction. First of all, what is the mode? Inherent, right? 
So, inherent instructions do not have opponents. So, there will be only opcode and the object code is only one byte, right? That's going to be 1B. If you check the set of instructions, you will see it. No question, right? How about this one? STD, what is the mode? Extended, great. So let's find out their object code. So what will be the opcode? Set of instruction. Okay. Okay, FD, what is the what is going to be the, your data? Byte. How many bytes you will have in the data? Any question, any answer? So let's look at the, so look at how we are writing. So you know how FD is coming here, right? We know the FD, how FD is coming. But look at the, look at the operand. Now you see here, the operand from here, you know that the operand is two byte, right? Because for most of the extended, not most, I think all, all the extended, the data, uh, the operand is going to be two byte. Because the extenders, the data are two byte. Doesn't matter how you see it, but to try, but you have to write it in two byte. So to write that, you have to write zero a two b, right? Is what I'm saying? Because it's only three digit here, but anything more than two digit is like more than a byte. But when when you write it as a byte, so you have to write zero a for one byte, two b for the next consecutive byte. Is what I'm saying? If you have four digits, you probably don't have to add zero there. But otherwise, you have to fill it. Because you know, in computer, you cannot have something like 1.5 byte. It's always either one byte or two byte or four byte or three byte, something like that. Let's try this, STX256. What is the mode? Extended, okay. So here is, here is what we have. Now, it's extended and the opponent is what? Decimal, right? 256, there is no pound sign, there is no dollar sign, there is no percentage sign. So that's decimal, we convert it to hex, which becomes 100, right? Now how do you write 100 in two byte? 01 followed by 00, right? Because you always want to write it in two byte because it's extended. Do you see what I'm saying? Because at this point, you are just trying to write exactly how the object code will be generated by the assembler. Let's look at the next one. Immediate. Now remember, for immediate, we probably want to know one information because some of the immediate instructions will be two byte, some of the immediate instructions will be three byte. Now how do you know it? How do you know it? At this point, your data is two byte, right? Because you know, 3512 cannot be one byte. For sure, right? It cannot be one byte. So, we know that how 8B came into the picture, right? And the remaining part, DB8, is basically the hex of 3512. But when you write DB8, you will always write 0D B8, because you want to write it in 2 byte, right? You know what I'm saying? Because you always want to write it in 2 byte, because it's more than a byte. Any question here? Okay, now next one, NEG29. Check it with, you see, before you, because you know, direct is a little bit tricky because some of the instructions look direct, but they are not direct, right? Because they don't have direct mode. So by default, they're extended. So this is extended because NEG does not have direct mode, right? So remember, whenever it is extended, the data, meaning the operand must be written in two byte. 
Look at, look at how we are writing. NEG, the opcode is 70, and we converted 29 into hex, which becomes 1D. But look at how we are writing 1D. We are writing 001D. You know why, right? Because you have to write the data operand in 2 byte. Doesn't matter how long it is, you have to write it in 2 byte. Yeah, this is the extended mode. Yes, all the extended, doesn't matter what it is, it's two byte. But, you know, the, let me show you something here. In case of the immediate, because immediate sometimes becomes one byte, sometimes two bytes, but you will know it from here. For an example, let's, let's look at here. For an example, let's see, let's look at this one. Let's say sub D, look at this immediate. Okay, now, this is the opcode, 83, but look at this column. Here, you see JJKK, this means that's going to be four digit in operand. That means the operand must be in two byte. You see what I'm saying? If you see here, let's say something like DD, that means one byte. So it, this is also a clue, a hint, that how long the operand is going to be. Now remember, doesn't matter how long your operand is, you have to write it in that many bytes. Even the operand is one byte, you have to write it in two bytes because this is exactly how the assembler will translate because we just want to see how the machine code will look like, how the object code will look like. This object code is the same like machine code, okay? And, and the good thing is when you go to lab, I think not right now, but after a couple of lectures, when you go to lab, uh, every after every compilation, there is a file generated automatically by the assembler we'll be using, which will include all the object code of the, pr of the instructions that you are having in your program. And it will be great to see that you will exactly understand why the object code is, because you will know exactly what the object code should be and you will exactly see that object code there, okay? The only difference is that software will show you in hex, you know it is in hex because you are writing everything in hex, but in computer, they are not in hex, they are in binary. The only reason we don't write it in binary because it's longer, but at the same time, at the end, that's the same thing because it's just a difference of a number system. Okay, now let's log on to pause and we'll do the quiz too tonight, which is all about the object code. In every question it look like this, you will be given an instruction, you have to write the object code. Be careful about the object code, you have to write in bytes, how many bytes it should have. Doesn't matter how long your operand is, it should be always how long it should be, okay. If you have a one byte operand, but it should be two bytes, so fill it with zero, zero, you know what I'm saying? At the beginning, don't put zero zero at the end because it will change the number. We all know it, right? I'm, you know, just basic thing. Any question? All right, so let's log on to pause. If you haven't done the addressing mode once, you, you must have to finish that first to see this one. I saw most of you probably finished it. I just checked and I think you'll see it.